Hi, sir. <laughs> How are you? I'm All good. right. It must be Laura. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Yes, it's nice to see mm -hmm. you too. Where are you from, sir? Um, my name is Julio. Flemalu Julio Piame. And I'm um I'm a Samoan. But I'm 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 currently uh, based in uh, Auckland, New Zealand. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes. Yesterday you were you were in the class, right? Now <laughs> <laughs> you're new. I let Malu know what you. can hear. Hello. 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 <laughs> hello. Say hello. Hello, teacher. <laughs> How are you? Hello, you're the mic. Hey, can you hear him, um, Laura? No, she's. I'm Laura. I'm Laura. Is not yet here, maybe. <laughs> Yo, Malone, Malone, so from where? Tesla Maki, Tesla Maki, only. Yo, eh, pull out. Yo, testing, can you all know me? Can you hear him, um, Laura? Laura? Hello, Laura. Can you hear me? Mom Hello, Laura. Laura. Mom Laura isn't yet here. Oh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, babe. Is it pie? Pie. Pie. <laughs> yeah. Pie. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Is it loud? Is it too loud or? Yeah, it's okay. Kia <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, Fat. Hello, <laughs> Ali. Hello. Hi. How how are you guys? Yeah, we're all good. All good. Yeah. Yeah. Kia ora. 
Nancy đúng không ạ? Hi Hana. Hey. Uh, uh, Sophia. Yeah. <cười> Where are you from? Oh, I'm from New Zealand. The three of you? Yeah, three of yeah. us. Oh. <cười> yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. from Philippines. All right. <cười> nice knowing you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, well, it's good meeting you too. Anna, can I ask a question? Yes. Did you try a lock in the uh, mudo? Um, again, the mudo. Yeah. Did you try a lock in? I I already enrolled in mudo. Oh, I see. Yesterday we had lecture. Hmm. About research. How was it? Yeah, it's quite good. We had a an activity, pop research. <laughs> well done. <laughs> we missed that. We missed that. Right. And may and today we I think we have a group activity. Mm. I see. Well, I tried to go with the lock in the middle, but it won't let me. I don't know what's happening. So I emailed back Lara. Mm -hmm. Tosi. Yes. Tosi. How many of us yeah. joining the class? It could be eight altogether I'm from yesterday. New Zealand. Uh, yesterday we oh. are seven. Yeah. There'll be eight eight people from New Zealand. Oh. Hello, sir. From where? Hello, sir. Speak in English. Oh. Oh. Wow. Hi, BC. Hi, Josie. How are you? Hi, Claire. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, hello, Mrs. Hello, hello, Claire. Hi, Pastor. Hey. Hello. Oh. Hi, Pastor. <laughs> Sorry, <Hello>. Hannah. <laughs> oh. Mr. Hello. Oh, uh, hi. Hi, Pastor. Please. Hi, Pastor. Hi, Claire. Hello. 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 Hello, Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't call my own thing. I don't want to eat them, but I show me all the things. My Lord, 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 my did you guys try to lock in the mural? No, I haven't yeah. done anything. Yes. Yes. I guess I tried to lock in, but it won't let me. <coughs> I passed the four, sir. My low level is in four. My low level. Good to see you all. Oh, yes, sir. So, if you have a quarter of some more, I may make a call again. Sorry, English. I'm not going to. I didn't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it a sign of money. Hannah, sorry for the language, Hannah. Good afternoon. We were Clarice and Hannah. I'm also Josie. 
Have you yeah. tried Hello? the oh. yeah. ring the Good morning? Pasta. Pasta. Good afternoon, oh, everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Good afternoon. Is it afternoon there? <laughs> I know there's a lot of cross conversation going. <laughs> It will message you. <laughs> Hello. Oh, no. um, um, I'm sorry, there's a rule for the uh, soup. With your coffee, take off your microphone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, have you got your data on? Oh. Hannah, what was your question? Have you tried the uh, Moodle key? The Moody key. Yeah, yeah, I did. She sent me the Moody key, but I tried to lock in, but it won't let me. It says there's an error for the access. That's too bright. Very slow, very slow. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello, Freddy. Hello, hello, hello. Wow, oh my. <laughs> yeah, good to see you, Pastor Freddy. Kia ora, Pastor Freddy. Hi, Silver Choice. Hello, everyone. Uh, hi. Hello. 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 See, our friends Hello. from New Zealand are here. <laughs> Yay! Good. Welcome. Welcome. What Good time afternoon. is it there? Good afternoon, Laura. Uh, it's it's, um, it's 5, 5 20. 21. 521. 5, 5 yeah. Okay. So my calculation is correct. So 120 here, 520 there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, and in our first day of class, we were able to introduce ourselves. You have here your classmates from the Philippines, although we have yeah. one South Korean who lives in the Philippines. All so, right. Um, let's do a quick introduction of ourselves, just your names and where you are right now. Even you guys from the Philippines, please introduce yourself to your new classmates. Um, these are our students from the New Zealand Extension. And we're so happy that they could join us. Okay, let's start with um, uh, Amanu, right? Yes, uh, good evening, um, good afternoon, everyone. Hi, it's Mr. Uh, I'm uh, Amanu Periatsa. I'm uh, currently a, a pastor for church, and I am also a teacher in our Bible college here with a few of our students here. Uh, it's my desire to pursue the study so that it was a uh, few years ago and I wanted to uh, uh, attend the uh, APTS uh, in the Philippines, but uh, God did not allow me to do that because of other callings. So here is my chance to go back to it. And uh, thank you very much for allowing me to uh, be part of this uh, study. And we, I hope and I believe that the, it will uh, give me uh, refreshment and also equip me more for the ministry and also the calling of God. Uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise God. Thank you, Pastor. How should we call you? Uh, I'm uh, Peniata. Peniata. Pen Peniata. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, how about, I'm not sure if I can pronounce your names properly, so please forgive me and just correct me later on. <laughs> Fiame? Fiame? Hello. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Uh, my name is Ilio Fiame. And uh, I am um, Samoan, and I'm currently based in Auckland, New Zealand. I'm really, really, really happy to, to join you guys on this study. Hope we will have a good time. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, Fia May. Yeah, yeah, Fia uh, May. Fia May. Okay. Yeah. How about Aso? Yeah, that's me. Uh, my name is Payaso, and uh, I have been uh, well a pastor for eight years now, and uh, yeah, I'm here from uh, Auckland, yeah, the uh, extension here in Auckland, and uh, I'm looking forward to this course. You know, 
the the well the you know the the thing is um it's just to broaden the knowledge you know learn more about the you know it's part of our you know what our our you know it's part of our calling you know and i need to learn more about this and um with the technology and all these things that's yeah, happening around us now, you know, it's <laughs> it's sort of making making it difficult for us. But I, I believe that this course, you know, it's going to help me a lot. So, thank you very much, uh, teacher, and uh, you know, so and how all should the we best call to you? everyone. Yeah, Pi. Just call Pi. me Pi. Pi. Yeah, Pi. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna get used to these names, huh? Pi. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How about um, Mr. Ferretti, Tole Afoa? Yeah, number four. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ferretti Tolefoa. I'm a pastor for 29 years in the Assembly of God Church of Samoa. I'd like to join uh, our class, I need more understanding about the Word of God. That's why I will need to join us. So thank you and God bless. <laughs> thank you. How should we call you? Yep. How should we call you? How should we Ferretti. 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 Yeah, Ferretti. 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 Okay, Ferretti. Oh, Fred. Well, this, oh, Fred, yeah. this one is easier to pronounce, Josie. Hi. <laughs> yeah, uh, my name is Zoraya Nkwande. Uh, also, I prefer to go to Josie. I'm from Auckland, New Zealand, and I'm the registered for the Bible school as a second job. And I just want to thank God and praise the Lord for the opportunity I'm here to uh, see your beautiful face, even though you are away from thousands of miles. But thank you for bringing up this um, Zoom online um, learning for us. So it's an honor to be here and yeah, and taking this paper because we we know that we are extension. But it's an honor. But thank you very much. Oh, thank you. So you are the register of um, SA, uh, is it right? New Zealand uh, Bible, yeah, Bible College. Yeah. Bible College. Okay. Yeah. Registrar to registrar. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How about Elise? Elise, right? Elise. Oh, Elise. <laughs> Hi. Nice meeting you guys. Yeah, I'm. My name is Elisa Sefo. I'm a Samoan born old man. <laughs> I'm living in Auckland, New Zealand. I, at the moment, I'm pastoring a church and I'm very happy to pursue a career in uh, learning more about the God's Word. And I am very interested in pursuing uh, through this class and thankful for meeting you and involving with you guys. Thanks a lot. Okay, Elise. Okay, thank you. How about Poasa? Are you, are you Veli? Am I right? Oh, Veli, yeah. You're right. Um, good evening, everybody from Auckland, New Zealand. Yeah, my name is Pastor Poasa Oveli. Currently, I'm pastoring one of our church here in New Zealand and also as a part-time teacher at our Bible school here in Auckland. It is an honor and privilege to enroll and also attend in this uh, course. Good to see you all, your smiling faces and also uh, it's a uh, Great privilege to to meet our lecturer. Yeah, we give glory to our heavenly Father. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor Wow. It is our honor to meet all of you. Our OSR is here as well, <laughs> Pastor Pule Pule, right? <laughs> <laughs> there he is, the one down there. He's the actually the one who arranged everything for you guys to join here. So we are so blessed to have him. Say hi. Uh, hello, hi. Hello, Laura. Hello. Uh, I'm not in your class, but I just check on our students <laughs> if they are attending <laughs> in their first class experience as uh, regular students. Now they are all extension uh, students. We have some new students. 
They are all full-time pastoring church and the faculties of our Bible college. And uh, some of them are members of the executives. And one of your students now is a superintendent. Oh, really? So it's a privilege to have them, them with you. So after I uh, giving you this is uh, this uh, speech, and then I lock off. I'm on my way to our pastor's meeting. But thank you so much for accepting them of in your class, even though it's a little bit late to register. But for the future, we will keep in touch for their uh, next courses. I think they will attend more courses before the lockdown will be shifted. And thank you so much. We will keep in touch. Yes, uh, thank you. I am pastoring. I am pastoring a church, and I am now a current principal of the Bible College in New Zealand. So God bless you. God bless our students. And you see, Laura, 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 Laura. Laura. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much, Laura. God bless you. Thank we'll you, Pastor. Time. Yes. We always communicate by email. It's good to see you now. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye -bye. okay. Okay, guys, it's so exciting to have you here. I think one of the good things the pandemic has done is to connect us in this way, you know. Yeah. Um, for the extension Sorry. sites, usually a teacher has to go there or we have to find a teacher within New Zealand who is connected to APTS and sometimes it's difficult. But now with, you know, digital technology and the online platform, uh, we can have classes together, um, even in different time zones. Um, I would like to introduce you to our Filipino students. So maybe one by one, you can introduce yourself and where you are right now, which part of the Philippines. So they will know you're also not in, most of them are not in Baguio City as well. <laughs> So our city is on lockdown. No one can get in. <laughs> okay, Hannah, can you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I am Hannah Habangangan. Um, I am from Samar province in the Philippines. Currently, I am here at our local church. I, what I do is I help my father in the ministry. Can see is the uh, senior pastor of the church. So, yeah, it's nice to meet you. Likewise, you too. Yes, nice Hannah is you. a pastor's <laughs> kid, a nurse too. <laughs> okay, Gladys. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I am Gladys May Castro. I live in Villasis, Pangasinan, northern part of the Philippines. But right now, I'm currently here in Manila because of the lockdown. I'm taking up um, MA, Intercultural Studies, yeah, with Islamic con concentration. Previously, I was a drug pusher. <laughs> I'm kidding. I am. I work. <laughs> I work in the pharma industry. Yeah, and I. I stopped working and I I responded to God's call last year and it's my second school in theo in theology. So it's so good to be here to see you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Gladys. You shocked us there for a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, how about Abdiel, brother Abdiel? Hi, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, especially to the New Zealand folks. I am Abdiel Loreto, uh, a father of four. I am not a pastor. I'm a retired employee. And I would like to mention my company here, Caltex, because New Zealand, we have a company here. Although now we have disposed and no longer operating in New Zealand. I am uh, enrolled in the under the graduate certificate program. And I really would like to learn more and it's really good to see uh, people from the other countries here in this course. Thank mm. you so much. Thank you, Abdiel. Thank you. Okay, Saivel. Saivel uh, pioneered a church at 21 years old. Such a lovely lady. <laughs> mm. I am Saivel Joy Scarlett from Isabella, northern part of the Philippines. And I have relatives there in New Zealand. I wanted to go there to, to, to take care of my tita, but God has a different plan. So right now I am blessed to be part of the new students of APPS, taking up MA in, in Intercultural Studies in Islamic Concentration, same with Ate Gladys. So it's so nice to meet you and to be with you guys here mm. in our class. Thank nice you, you sir. Nice, nice to meet you. How about Brian? 
Hello, everybody. I'm Brian from Baguio City, and I am a pastor at a local church here in the city and also serving uh, a local church in Manila in the capital of the nation. So, yeah. Brian Here's is also for, the uh, National yeah. Youth Director. Yes. National Youth Director. <laughs> okay. Well, Brian? So I, I think, Brian, you've been to Auckland, right? You've been to New Zealand to do ministry. Oh. Uh, I've been there once, but uh, twice uh, Southland in Queenstown and in Burkhardville. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. <country. laughs> okay, thank you, Brian. How about our brother Fidel? Fidel lived in America for, I, I don't know, how many years, brother Fidel? Well, I'm, I'm uh, Amargo. I'm a retired United States Navy physician assistant. Uh, then I worked as a civilian uh, in California for 16 years. Uh, finally retired, uh, pulled the plug, and we're here in Cavite, which is just south of Manila at our little Christian school. Um, I also work with Campfires for Christ Asia, we, uh, which, uh, and then uh, we, the biggest thing that we do is uh, out of our church out of California is uh, four to five pastors workers conferences, mostly in Palawan. And um, we, we, uh, we do a lot of things there with the we're focusing more on the tribal people. And uh, my daughter and my kids and some of our worship team, they love their stay in New Zealand. They uh, came from Calvary Chapel and did some great work down there with some uh, skateboarders and uh, mostly Calvary Chapel guys. And they love New Zealand. They, yeah. You guys are so blessed to live there. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I've seen the pictures. I wish there were PAs. <laughs> I'd, uh, if I was young enough, I'd, I'd, re I'd uh, work as a PA there. Yeah. Oh, lovely, mm. lovely, lovely people. Oh yeah, That's lovely you. people, lovely place. Mm -hmm. Great history okay. too. True. Okay, thank you, <laughs> thank, thank you, brother. Warriors. Their Maori warriors are amazing people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you, brother Fidel. Um, now our only South Korean brother, Pastor Paul. That's his English name, but his Korean name is Yoon Sang Hyun. Hello everyone, uh, this is Yoon Sang Hyun. Uh, I'm from Korea. Uh, I have lived uh, here in Baguio since 2008 as a uh, missionary family. Uh, I'm so pleased to meet you here, <laughs> the students. Uh, thank you, that's it. Okay, thank you. I see that uh, our um, Louisa, is it right? Am I saying it right, Louisa? Yeah. 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 She's trying to get in, I think. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Hi. So we can't see you. Is your video off? Can you turn it on? Yeah, it's off. But I'm just... <clears throat> it's okay. Um, can you introduce yourself to us? Okay, maybe our sister is, you know, having some technical problems. Louisa, if you're ready, mm -hmm. just talk to us later on. Okay. Yes, but sorry about this. I'm no just problem. Trying, uh, yeah, I have a bit of a technical problem, but I, uh, I will. Can you please, would you mind giving me like maybe three minutes just to, just to leave the meeting and come back on? Is that all sure. Right? Sure, no okay. problem. We Thank have a technical so support I'm team. Sorry about that. <laughs> No problem, no problem. Okay, so while we're waiting for Louisa, I'm just going to give a brief um, uh, overview. The reason we have a research methods class is to help you write your papers because you're going to try to, I, I think for the New Zealand Extension, it's an MA in ministry, right? You're going to yeah. try to accomplish yeah. and, you know, get that degree. Um, APT has a style of writing. And we follow what we call the Chicago style in referencing um, this easier manual to read. That's the Kate L. Turabian Manual for Writers. If you can buy this book by, via Amazon, it would be good. And another required textbook for you is The Craft of Research. This one from University of Chicago as well. You have to read the entire book because you are going to do a book review. 
Okay. The book review, I think, is due on July 31. Am I right, other classmates? Yes. Yes, yes July 31. Yes. So these two books are your required reading. If you have, you know, friends there who have these books, you can borrow them or in your library. If you have them in your library, you can borrow it. So please try to uh, get a hold of those books. Again, the overall reason why we're having this is for you uh, to be trained to write at the graduate level. Okay, um, I'm sure you are already writing papers back in university or in your college days, but at, at the graduate level, and even if you decide to go on to the doctoral studies level, you have to be able to write at a level where you're not just copying ideas of others, but really enforcing and presenting your own ideas and making sure that all your claims are backed up by evidence. So that's why it's called research-based papers okay so that's it that's basically the reason we have this class to prepare you for the next classes that you're gonna have some of our professors um dr k fountain for example the previous academic dean who lives in auckland I, I think she lives in auckland or basically she's from new zealand she's very strict about this thing so if you happen to have her as your teacher you'll have to follow the ap test style for writing okay mm. now let me just give you a brief view of our Moodle. So aside from Zoom, Zoom is our virtual classroom, but Moodle is our learning management system. Can you see this? So I already yeah. sent you individually your Moodle passwords, right? Mm -hmm. All the lessons are uploaded there. You can see them, you can download all the lessons. Okay, mm -hmm. for example, this was our lesson for the first lesson, uh, which you missed sadly. Um, I'm trying to upload the video here in Moodle so you can also just get the video here and you can review lesson one mm. uh, via the video. So you can actually download all the lesson materials here mm -hmm. so you have no problem. And then see if you notice here, today the lesson is this one, the library and the internet. After the words, you have a quiz. You just have to click this, answer the quiz here. The quiz will close on July 1, 10 a.m. So make sure that you complete the quiz before it closes. Okay? Mm. Okay. So anyway, that's just a, um, a view. Can you hear me? Is my sound okay? Yeah. 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 All right. So, Saibel, I'm sorry. I think my sound is okay. Yeah. Now All right. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead. Yes, I tried to download the... Uh, what the recorded uh, file, but I couldn't find, uh, find yeah. Yeah, I know Did some others also told it? me. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I'll try to re-upload. I think something happened. So I'm trying to upload it here under lecture videos. Oh, okay. So, but something's wrong. So I'll try again until you get all the videos of the lecture. We will record everything. So just so you know, all of our lectures mm -hmm. will be recorded so that you have a chance to review when you have, uh, are, as I said, you're allowed three absences. So if ever, if ever you are absent, you just need to re uh, review the recording. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. What about us? What about, um, because I sent an email that I, sh I was trying to lock in the middle, but the ID was given, it, doesn't it? Um, it won't let me? It okay. says this, uh, yeah, so, oh, please, uh, access please, um, error. Okay, I'm gonna ask our IT. So we have an IT personnel here, Cedric, who's helping us. So we'll reset your your Moodle account. Hopefully okay. it works. So continue. If you have any problems, just email me so we can work mm -hmm. on it. You know. Okay. Right. Okay. How about the others? Were you able to access your Moodle? I haven't done that. So I haven't done that myself. So but I'll do it after the year. Yes, oh, hopefully. And if there are any problems, feel free <laughs> to email us, you know, mm -hmm. so we'll work yeah. with you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So now now let's go to our lesson. Um, yeah. We're going to just discuss research thinking. Um, yesterday, uh, last Wednesday, we discussed what research is. It was a basic overview of what research is. But now let's talk about research thinking. Why it's important for us to have a class on research is because the type of thinking that research at this level, at the graduate level, um, requires is different from the college level. Okay, so there's a certain mindset and uh, attitude of a researcher. So the research has a special way of thinking attached to it. 
investigate a special way of thinking attached to it. So researchers uh, start their work from the premise that knowledge is attainable and that finding truth is possible. Last, last Wednesday, I told my students that to be a researcher is like being like an investigator, you know, like being Sherlock Holmes. You're a detective. There's a question and you're trying, you have a specific set of steps or a method so you can mm -hmm. achieve um, the solution to that problem or get the answer to that question. So research, it's possible to achieve, a, to reach a conclusion or to find truth. It's possible. And if you follow uh, certain steps, your, so your mm -hmm. conclusions might also be valid in a sense that people not be able to question it because you did, you know, you followed the systemic steps and made sure of the internal validity of your research. So the research mindset is characterized by objectivity, focus, clearly set forth presuppositions, local organization, and intellectual honesty. Okay? In a mm. biblical framework, it is adorned by humility. So mm. last Wednesday, mm. I reminded our students here that a researcher is humble, especially because we are also Christians. No? Mm. Um, yeah. We do not want our students here at APTS to reach a level of academic excellence, but lost you know, all humility, lost mm -hmm. that connectivity with the Lord. It will be useless, you know, meaningless. If, all, <coughs> if you have all these degrees, but you are not rooted in the Lord. <coughs> okay? So there is that we have to be objective, focused. We have a goal. We, have, um, we are organized. And of course, we have to be honest. That's why we avoid plagiarism at all costs. Plagiarism is copying other thoughts. We avoid that because we have to have integrity. And most especially, we are humble. We recognize there is no perfect theology, no perfect research. Um, you might be wrong. <laughs> and so you have to be willing to be corrected. You know. So at the end of this class, around August, you will be presenting your papers to each other. And your classmates will be questioning your research. And you have to be willing, you know, and open to receive questioning. Not, we're not going to destroy each other's studies. No, we're going to help build each other up, you know, help build each other to become better. Okay? So that is the type of mindset that we should have. So objectivity. Researchers should be able to detach themselves from their preferences and convictions and dispassionately consider the evidence. Okay, we can try to be as objective as we can, although total objectivity is a myth. <laughs> In honesty, it's very hard to be objective. We always wear a lens, you know, we, from our background, from who we are, from childhood, all the way to who we are now, that will affect how we see things. Okay, but we'll, let's try, just try to the best of our ability to be as objective as we can. That means pastors... You know, we under, I understand because I'm a pastor myself. I'm an associate pastor of a church here, International Praise Center. So I have these, you know, cherished ideas in my heart, you know. And sometimes it's very hard for me to set that aside so that I can be objective. But we have to be when it comes to research. Uh, we have to be as objective as we can. Okay, next. Okay, while total objectivity is impossible the researcher's goal must to be as objective as possible. So objectivity requires us to consider negative evidence, to analyze ideas that are foreign or different, to look at arguments that might upset our position. Actually, you will become a really good researcher, and I think even a better person, if you're willing to listen to all sides of the issue, right? There's the problem. Of course, whether you accept it or not, you have a stand. This is my stand. But a researcher will, okay, this is my stand, but I'm just going to set that aside for now. I'm going to listen to all sides, the pros, the cons, those who are in between. You know, I'm listening to all sides before I make my conclusion. So that is how you gain objectivity. Even if you don't agree what, with, you know, this statement, this person's statement, listen. Try to understand what he's trying to say. And then before you make your own conclusion, that will help you become more objective. And actually, feel, I feel even it will help you become a better person, more wise and mature, right? Okay. 
Now, being objective requires courage. Wow. And humility. I like that. Being objective requires courage and humility. It demands putting pet ideas on hold while examining all the evidence. It insists on developing wisdom to consider every facet of a topic. Okay? So we are willing to put all our, con our set our pet ideas, <coughs> willing to examine all evidence, and it, it insists on developing wisdom to consider every facet of a topic. So, do you know the story of the blind man and the elephant? Oh, sorry for that. Oh. Do you know <laughs> the story? <laughs> Never. This yeah. is an, in, an Indian in story. <laughs> the Indian story. Oh. Right. Oh, how, how about the Filipinos here? Do you know the story of the blind man and the elephant? Oh, some of you know yes. it. Okay. <laughs> well, the story goes like this. There were... Six, oh no, five. One, two, three, four, five, six blind men. And they have never seen an elephant. <laughs> and so one time, one of their friends brought them to the, the I think, what, is it, what do you call a king? Indian king, Raja. Okay, the, temp, the, the king, the, the palace of the Raja where the elephant was. And they were given a chance to touch the elephant. And so one of them touched the ear um, and said, oh, an elephant is like a carpet, you know, because it has the ear, feels like a carpet. The other touched the trunk. Oh, an elephant is like a snake. <laughs> then the other touched the, what do you call it, the horn. Oh, an elephant is like a spear, you know. Then the other touched the leg, very huge leg. Oh, it's like, an, it's like a tree, you know, a tree trunk. The other touched the body of the elephant. Oh, it's like a wall. And then the other touched the tail. Oh, it's like a rope. And they started to agree, argue within themselves, amongst themselves, saying, no, 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 the elephant is like a wall. No, it's like a snake. No, it's like a spear. You know? And they started to fight and fight. Finally, the king came out and was like, be quiet. You, know? you are only defining the elephant based on your own perception. But if you put that together, you'll see the greater whole. Okay, and basically that's what research is about. You can only understand what you can perceive. But um, that's why we need to listen to all sides of the story. Because mm. if we open ourselves to all sides of the story, we may see the bigger picture. Mm. So that's objectivity mm. in research. Okay. Mm. Next, the importance of objectivity. So our sensory perceptions and life experiences can lead to limited access and overreaching misinterpretation. So we must recognize that objective truth is out there, but we must have the courage and humility to discover it in its totality. So it demands putting ideas on hold while examining all the evidence. It insists on developing wisdom to consider every facet of a topic. Okay, so that's for objectivity. Now let's go to focus. A researcher must say, like the Apostle Paul, one thing I do. <laughs> Very serious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and focus on the problem and its solution. Why do I say focus is important? Because honestly, our brains are very creative. So we're thinking of this topic and then we get distracted and then we go here. <laughs> and I've read a paper like that. It started like this and it, it went there and it went here until the end of it is a different topic altogether. <laughs> so we have to have focus. In research, you have to narrow your topic, choose only one topic, choose only to answer one research question, and then make sure that your conclusion is an answer to the introduction, right? Okay, so you must have focus. Research thinking must fly straight as an arrow without deviating from the goal. You cannot begin research until you have determined your problem and purpose, what needs focusing, and how you are going to do it, okay? Don't worry, I'm going to help you uh, get, I'm going to help you, you know, find your research topic, your problem. Um, we'll have an activity where we will try to develop your research topic. And in that way, it will focus you. You know, you, you will be forced to focus yourself because that type of exercise, you have to answer certain questions that will help you narrow down your research topic. Okay? 
Next, a researcher's mindset. There should be clear presuppositions. So a presupposition is a basic understanding that under, undergirds one's thinking on a given topic. Okay, sometimes presuppositions are called assumptions. They are what we take for granted. Mm. All of us have presuppositions. Okay, all of us. It's okay. Just acknowledge your presupposition. For example, I believe in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I believe in, this, in, in the baptism of the Spirit and the continuation of the gifts. That's my presupposition. Everything I write has that underlying presupposition because that's who I am. That's what I believe in. And so um, we will never be able to completely eradicate our presuppositions. It's okay. You just need to acknowledge it. Okay. Um, but then maintain objectivity as much as possible. So, um, for example, if you write a thesis, you will be asked to write down your assumptions. Okay, so that will be part of a thesis. Although, by the way, for the MA, all MAs and even the MDiv, you can choose to write a thesis. So we have two tracks. We have the thesis track and the non-thesis track. So if you decide that you want to write a thesis, then you have to clarify your assumptions in your thesis paper. Okay? So in the area of religious studies and theological education, presuppositions are usually strong, right? So often considered matter of life and death. It's vitally important to who I am and what I say. So ask yourself, which of my presuppositions affect the way I think and write? Okay, so I'm not saying that presuppositions are wrong. It's, it's just there. And you just have to be honest with yourself. I, I told you I'm very honest. I'm very Pentecostal in the way I write and think. I cannot help it. <laughs> I cannot help it. So the way I write and think is so different from my other Reformed or Evangelical uh, brothers and sisters. Um, I'm just honest in that that is my presupposition. Okay, so in the same way, you should also recognize each writer, each scholar, has their own presupposition. So presuppositions are neither good nor bad. They simply are. They're just there. Okay, next, organization. Organized thinking puts similar ideas and concepts together. Everything has its own place. Organized thinking also places ideas, phrases, and words in a logical order allowing the reader and hearer to immediately guess the criteria used to organize them. So a researcher should be organized. And so organization starts with your mind. You have to de determine, okay, what I would like to talk about, what is my topic sentence, what evidence supports my topic sentence, and so on. So a good research paper and a good researcher is organized, knows how to present data and sources in an organized manner. And then, of course, intellectual honesty. We must recognize that whoever wrote before us opened the way. Their work made ours easier. Therefore, we owe them a debt of gratitude. We must acknowledge this debt by inserting a reference to her or his work. So we have no business taking what is not our words or ideas and using it as if it were ours. Okay, so this is why we have to study uh, the Turabian, Chicago Turabian referencing style because we have to note that, oh, this is not my idea. I got this from somewhere. And so you have to put note that and you have to put that in the bibliography. If you don't, you're stealing. Okay, you're stealing an idea that's not yours or you are lying you're saying oh uh, you're it's as if you're saying this is mine but it's actually not yours that's what we call plagiarism and in APTS um, if you're caught plagiarizing it depends on the teacher some teachers will ask you okay you plagiarize here you have to rewrite but some teachers will automatically fail your paper and if you have failed because of plagiarism you're only given three instances of plagiarism after that you will are kicked out of APTS. It is that serious. Only three instances of plagiarism and you will be kicked out. So um, why? Because we're a seminary. We are tra treat, uh, training pastors. 
we are ministers and we cannot tolerate cheating. And plagiarism basically is cheating. It is um, saying, it is, you know, getting ideas and the work of others and saying it's ours, which isn't true. Okay? Right. But don't worry. Most of the teachers, including me, are very gracious. We will just give you time to rewrite. Oh, for example, I would say, oh, you forgot to cite this. Can you cite, where, where did you get this? You know, and some teachers will really check your notes. Did you really get this from this book? <laughs> <laughs> so they will really check if you were intellectually honest. Okay. Uh, intellectual honesty requires that we do not distort another author's meaning or use of words quote or paraphrase within, you have to quote or paraphrase within its context. Uh, ha, have you ever experienced being misquoted? You said something and then someone else used your words but use it for a different meaning. Paraphrasing. That's really irritating, right? <laughs> I mean, I did say that. <laughs> and that's what happens if, you, if we misquote other authors as well. Like I, while we are writing the paper, you are using this idea, but you're actually using it differently than what that author <coughs> meant. Okay, so um, intellectual honesty also means that we have to use the, their statements according to their intended meaning that we do not use them out of context. We do not misquote them, okay? Also, it requires us to admit that we don't know something or that someone else's answer is better than mine. So if you think that his words are better, then quote his words and of course cite them at the end. Honesty is the best policy, amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And of course, and this is very important, humility. It is a basic Christian virtue. It comes from wisdom. Those who are humble are wise. So when a book or article exudes arrogance, the know-it-all, I'm better than you, <laughs> better than everyone else attitude, readers soon lose interest. A wiser path is to write in a way that is humble, tentative, willing to learn. You know, this kind of writing makes room for dialogue, for reaching solutions. So um, when writing a research paper at the graduate level, <coughs> you don't say, you should, you know, you must. But you, I propose, I suggest, I posit that, you know, so you are, you are not, you know, forcing others to swallow your conclusions, but you are saying, I'm proposing that this could be the answer. No, I, I suggest that you, if you could listen to me, I suggest that this may be the solution, right? So in that way, you are opening yourself to dialogue. My, my thesis for my Master of Theology is actually a dialogue with a, a group in the Philippines called the Third Wave or Neo-Charismatic. So I am from the Classical Pentecostal. We are from the Classical Pentecostal, Assemblies of God, so proud. But there's a group that uh, comes from the Third Wave, uh, more of... Um, well, we call them neo-charismatics. And so they have teachings that I don't agree. And we have teachings that they don't agree. <laughs> so, but there's something I can learn from them. There's something they can learn from us. So if I attack them, say, you, what, you what you're teaching is wrong. You know, I write a book against them. I, they will close their doors to me. They will not, no longer listen to me. So instead, I interviewed them and I went into a dialogue. You know, I don't necessarily agree but I would like to learn more. I would like to understand where you're coming from. In the same way now, yes, we would like you to understand us. <laughs> and we would like to learn from you as well. That's the good thing about research. You are willing to dialogue with each other. Okay? So it comes from humility. And it is wisdom from the Lord. Okay? All right. So above all, conclusion... Conclusions should oh, be stated, that should be stated, stated in language that shows humility, willingness to learn, and to accept other possibilities. So there's no perfect theology. We are just learning from each other. Sorry, it's not break time. <laughs> okay. Now, yeah, as I said, it's not break time because it's too early. But I would like to ask you, do you have any questions? Any questions about the topic so far? 
No? Okay. okay. So let's move on to the thinking process. So now, as I said, the, at the graduate level, the kind of thinking process expected from you is different from the college or high school level. So according to Bloom's taxonomy of the cognitive domain of learning, knowing and thinking take place at different levels. So knowledge is simplest. Thinking about knowledge is more complex. For example, analysis and synthesis, <coughs> evaluation and application require more complex thinking skills. So this is Bloom's taxonomy. So the simplest is actually remembering, okay? The simplest form of learning and knowledge is remembering. When you can recall facts and basic complex, when you can define, duplicate, list, memorize, repeat, and state, okay? Next, the next, um, but a bit more complicated would be to understand Stay. when you're able mm -hmm. to explain ideas or concepts. So the words used is classify, <coughs> describe, discuss, explain, <coughs> identify, locate, recognize, report, select, and translate. Then, of course, this is a bit more difficult, which I think would apply to, let's say, doctor of ministry level, apply, you know, when you use new inform, uh, information and and apply it to a situation. So the terms would be execute, implement, solve, use, demonstrate, interpret, operate, schedule, and sketch. And then analyze would be higher form when you draw connections among ideas. Um, and then evaluate when you justify a stand or decision. And the highest form is when you create, when you produce new or original work. And this would be at the PhD level. If you notice PhDs, they must write something new, original. Okay, so for us at the master's level, um, I think you could start with understand and apply, not remember. So remember would be uh, simply very simple, like a college level. You, when you, you know, when you create a, write a paper that's defining something, that's just stating mm -hmm. facts, that's not master's level. So when you write your papers now, you must start from the understand level. You must present a study with the goal of understanding first, you understanding and your readers understanding something. Now, if you can try at the apply level, which is difficult, you know, writing a paper for the purpose of application is not that easy. I think our doctor of ministry students, um, um, I will be teaching research to them this July and their type of writing is practical theology. So they will get, um, they will try to understand something, but they won't stop there. They will try to apply that into their ministry situation. So the apply level is kind of difficult as well. So I'm not going to demand that you write a paper with an application in mind, but at least an, at the level of understanding things, that you're able to explain ideas, okay? That you're able to describe. Now, if you try to write at the analysis level, that's amazing. You can differentiate things. You can draw connections among ideas. That would be a really good paper, okay? But I will not require you to write a create at the create level. <laughs> that will be the PhDs who do that. You know, they, they, they do research for the purpose of contributing something new, okay? So don't worry, you're not at that level yet. But if you want to, wow, praise God, go ahead. <laughs> Okay, you have questions here? Okay, so now, as I said, your writing should be from the understand level going up. Okay, do not write a paper that's for the purpose of remembering or just recalling facts or just defining, no. You have to be from the understand level up. Okay? Okay. So, how do we write uh, papers that uh, have engaged sources, that have critical thinking? So we use uh, certain um, thought processes. So the first two sets are what we call analysis and synthesis. So in writing, you should be able to analyze and you should be able <clears throat> to synthesize. So analysis is examining evidence piece by piece. It's like a boy taking a clock apart and finding out what makes it tick. Okay, so when you analyze something, you see this idea or thought, you take it apart piece by piece and you try to understand how does this work? Okay, that's analysis. 
On the other hand, synthesis begins with two or more ideas or systems. After studying how each one works, after you analyze each topic, each idea, then you put them together to form a new one idea. Okay, so this is what analysis and synthesis looks like. For analysis, there's one idea and you analyze each part. For synthesis, there are two or more ideas and you understand them each and then you put them together as one, as one right, a new one. Mm -hmm. So that is how you apply critical thinking in your writing. You analyze and you synthesize. So analysis and synthesis are mental activities. They may appear in writing, but they first take place in researchers' mind. In a paper, analysis usually appears in the body of the paper, while synthesis is more evident in the development of a model or program or in the conclusion. So after you discuss your analysis, you pull them in together and synthesize it. Okay, that makes a really good research paper. Next, application and evaluation. So application refers to using information. So what you learned, you apply. For example, one applies church growth procedures to a church in order to add new members. Or one applies Greek or Hebrew orthography to write Greek or Hebrew. Okay, knowing without applying could make for useless knowledge. Okay, so I hope that what you learn as you study will be used to build the church. That is the goal of theological education, to build the church and advance God's kingdom. So, so how about evaluation? Evaluation does not use information to do something. It uses information to decide whether something is of value. Okay. Um, I read one um, dissertation, I think from Samoa. What he did is he evaluated the Bible school of, of uh, Samoa AG. It was a very good study. And after evaluating, they found areas that could be improved, their strengths, their weaknesses, and so on. And that, was, that study was used to actually improve their Bible school. And it's very good. So we have it here in the library if you want to read it one day. But that's evaluation. Mm -hmm. The purpose is to assess and then use the, the result of that study to improve something. Okay? So evaluation requires setting up criteria by which to measure. So one must not only answer the question, how good is this? But also, how do I know this is good? Okay, okay, so we have analysis, synthesis, application, and evaluation. Now we have inductive and deductive reasoning. So induction has been defined as the process by which people discover and prove general propositions. So starting from the particulars, we formulate conclusions, laws, and principles. So inductive reasoning is at the heart of the scientific method. It undergirds surveys, polls, and advertising. So basically, for induction, you gather data, and then you get the theory out of that. So inductive. Deductive is other way around. So Let's see, what is deductive? Deductive reasoning starts from the general or the universal. So Miriam Webster Collegiate Dictionary defines deduction as the deriving of a conclusion by reasoning, specifically inference in which the conclusion about particulars follows necessarily from general or universal premises and then a conclusion reached by logical deduction. So, sorry. So for deduction, you start from a general principle, okay? And then you try to apply that general principle to situations and you reach a conclusion. Induction, you get ideas from different particulars or let's say different individuals and you arrive at a general principle. Okay, do you understand the difference? Yeah. So induction, I will try to get each of your idea and then I will arrive at a general principle. Deduction, I start from a general principle, apply it to different people, and I will reach a conclusion. Okay? So we have synthesis, analysis, evaluation, application, induction, deduction. So these are the thought processes we use as we write, as we do research. The last one is very important, and this is called 
asking questions. Now, some people don't like the term criticism, but it's basically that. Mm -hmm. When we express doubt or skepticism. So doubt is considered by some as basic to research. Others call the same principle criticism. And I want to tell you this is not negative. Remember what I said earlier, we're not here to criticize in a way that we're destroying each other. So it's always constructive criticism. We're asking questions so we can understand. We're asking questions to make things better. Okay? Research asks hard questions. Questions about the source of information as well as about the content and meaning of that source. It's okay to ask questions. So research thinking demand that I question the source of information. Who wrote this? No? As I read critically, I need to query the content. What exactly is the author saying? As also what the writer wants me to know and believe after reading this piece. Is she trying to inform me or is she trying to convince me? Okay, basically asking questions is critical thinking. That you don't just accept everything. You, you first ask, ah, who wrote this? Who is the source? Why did she write this? What does she want to accomplish by writing this? And so on. So critical thinking is very important in this day and age. <laughs> if you read um, all this, all sorts of information published in Facebook and the social media and whatever, you have to have critical thinking. With a plethora of information, there's also the plethora of false information, right? And a researcher, a pastor, all of us, we have to be willing to apply critical thinking. Um, I want to practice with you. This is an exercise. What can you say about this statement? I want you to practice critical thinking. <laughs> this is a statement from a writing called Reasoning from the Scriptures, published in 1985. It says, the Holy Spirit is the active force of God. It is not a person, but is a powerful, powerful force that God causes to emanate from himself to accomplish his holy will. <laughs> what can you say about this statement? Yeah, what's the question again, please? Uh, yeah, what can you say about this statement? It doesn't speak of the Holy Spirit as a person. It speaks of the Holy Spirit as a force. All right, can you, ex ex what do you think? Why, why do you say that? It says it is not a person, mm -hmm. but it is a powerful force that God causes to emanate from himself. To but the book himself. title is Reasoning from the Scripture. But what I'm, scripture did he use? <laughs> okay, I'm testing your critical thinking skills. Huh? What if someone posts this on Facebook? What will you say? What scripture did he use? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a, one time a friend of mine posted on Facebook from a prophet. I forget the name of the prophet, but it says, the Spirit of God is a force like the colors of the rainbow. The Holy Spirit is a force like the eight colors of the uh, eight colors, seven colors of the rainbow. Each color is the force of the Spirit. Like, huh? <laughs> so that, this is when critical thinking steps in. Because if we just accept things like this, it's like, oh, wait a minute, is this really the Holy Spirit he's talking about? No. And as fast, yeah, Star go ahead. He's been watching too much Star Wars. The Force be with you. <laughs> <laughs> so what if, but, God, I, what if God's holy will is not evident in parts of the world, then the Holy Spirit can't be there? That's, that's, that's. Yeah, this, this guy's been doing too many drugs. <laughs> How about the others? Uh, yeah, I, I truly believe that it's the Holy Spirit itself. So first, you know, Jesus mentioned that in uh, John 14, chapter 14, and chop, uh, chapter 15 and 16. Right. And uh, those are the evidences that uh, 
you know, the other person counselor Jesus mentioned was uh, it's the Holy Spirit who will see you with us today. That's true, and he can be grieved. You know, he has personality, mm. yeah, and more and so on. But actually, I got this from Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> I oh, wanted no to wonder. see if you could recognize <laughs> yeah. that Jehovah's Witnesses has have um, teachings that stem all the way from a heresy called Arianism. Yes. So for them, Jesus is like a lower deity. So the Holy Spirit is definitely a lower deity. So that's when our critical thinking must step in. Mm. You know, don't be afraid to question. When I responded to my friend who posted that on Facebook, I said, I'm sorry, I don't think this is the Holy Spirit. She was angry. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, the rainbow of God was there. <laughs> After Noah's, you know, I had to message her personally to explain that um, the Holy Spirit uh -huh. is a person, not a thing, not a ray of a rainbow mm. color, not a force, you know. So um, then critical thinking must step mm. in. So we do not accept everything given to us. So this is just my point about doubt and skepticism. Don't be afraid to question because questioning will actually help you lead to the right answer. Okay, anything else you'd like to add about this one? Okay, so a researcher's mind uh, is like a strain, you know, research thinking demands a mind like a can with a strainer lid. If the lid is used as a strainer, ideas coming in or out can be evaluated, straining out the bad, leaving in the good, you know, and hopefully you'll be able to reach to the, at the, to the right conclusion because you were able to strain out the not so good. <laughs> All right, good. We have finished this lesson. Do you have any questions? Okay, so basically, I'm just giving you an overview of the kind of thinking, you know? So mm -hmm. you have to be focused, organized, honest, humble, but also with critical thinking. You have to engage sources, analyze, synthesize, you know? This isn't college level where all you do is state facts. You have to write from the understanding up to the creative level of thinking. Okay, so we're going to take a break. After this, we're going to discuss um, the library. I will teach you how to use EBSCO. Since you are far from us, you have no access to our library. We have actually uh, paid for membership uh, with EBSCO, uh, the Global Digital Theological Library, and so on. So you can uh, find sources for your writing. Okay, but before that, do you have any questions? No, thanks. All right. No, thank you. So let's take a break. Um, five minutes only. You know, go to the bathroom, drink your coffee like this. Go on. Don't leave the vi virtual classroom. Just turn off your video. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> 
Laura, Laura. Yes. Um, are there any um, students from Samoa, or yes. they are in a uh, different class? Different class. Yeah, we have oh, students okay. from Fiji, Samoa. Oh. I think they've finished research methods, so they're taking other <laughs> classes. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Pastor Brian, very good. <laughs> Do you know um, Ta'ala Gasologa? Yeah. yeah. He's not here, right? No. Mm -hmm. uh. I'm, I'm checking attendance. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 Malu. Let's see if I'm going to go. Malu. Let's go. 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 Yeah, 
<laughs> Om uh, men kom jeg nu for så lidt. Jeg kan ikke. Jeg har nu fået dit pejler. Ah, kan du få engang sådan en fuld? Ah, ni kan også skrive med en af os af os. Ah, så er det det koste at passe printe. Kun bare se, om det det koste engang så kan du kigge lidt eller tjue penge engang kan du måske få jer ud. Ja, okay. What time? Mm. Monday. I have a few. Okay. Well, good. Yeah, for all. I will be very I'm going to go well <laughs> Mm. 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 Jadi orang Amerika mahu apa? Dia nak fakar umur ini, pengek ye. Oh, ya okey. Wah, apa tu? Sekarang ni ngah 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 lagi kamu ab apa ni ab serba. Kalau mute, ngah serba. Ibu ngah pisah pisah orang mana pun kalau kamu mute lah. Siapa ngah? Apa yang mesti fikir ngah ada mute lah. Ya, mute. Nasa. Isso aí da moni. Já, hum, é um bom. Tô de volta. Já estou feliz lá. Uma vez aí. Aí sim, uma vez só. Ai, finally. Alô, lava. Alô, lava. Alô, Alça. Alô, lava. Alô, Luisa. Hi, hi, pastas. Alô, Luisa. Hi. <laughs> Good to see you. Oh, we lost her. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, there. <laughs> yes. Good to see you. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, it's good to see you. Where are you at now? Are you at the school? I'm at the um yes, I'm 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 below I'm at the church office. I see. I'm with the uh, um Josie our registrar and um the other pastors but I'm, I'm underneath the um <laughs> the building. I see. Wow. We've got some of the Bible school teachers here. Good to see you all. Hey <laughs> <laughs> so how can how I ask Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. can, can I record while you're, while you're teaching online? Sure, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, we're also recording this now, so I'm just really finding it hard to upload. If, mm -hmm. if the Moodle doesn't work, I'll try Dropbox. So I'll try okay. all applications mm -hmm. so you guys can get a copy of the recording. All right. Yeah, that would be good. That would be good, um, Laura. Yeah. Yeah. 
Good. Also, the mm. lecture handouts are all mm. available, so you just download it from Moodle. Okay. Yeah. If you want a PowerPoint version, just tell me. I can email them to you, okay? So maybe you want to teach this to your class, so go ahead. You can get my PowerPoint. Just email me if you want it. All right. Yeah, hope I hope my um, ID can fix ASAP. You have it's not fixed yet. No, still, still no. Okay, I'm gonna oh, call yeah. call our IT just in a second. Okay. Hey, Laura. No, you know, she's on the phone. Okay, Josie, I've called our IT. Hopefully, he fixed it. He's going to reset uh, your account. Hey, Laura. Yes, who's that? Yeah, it's Pai. Can you give me the author of those two books uh, for our, you know, the textbooks? Yes. Um, do you have a copy of the syllabus? Oh, it's in there. Yes, yeah, definitely yeah. here. Let me share that to you. Mm -hmm. There you go. So your required textbooks are here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you are required to buy number one by yeah. Booth, Colum, Williams, Bizup, Fitzgerald. Fourth edition, please. Um, yeah. for also, the second one is the Turabian. I think maybe your library has a copy of this. I hope so. <laughs> if not, it's available by, uh, via Amazon. Mm, yeah. Okay. So, but the one that you need to read is this one because you have to do a book review. Yeah, that one is the, the craft of research, eh? Right. You have to read the entire yeah. book. Okay, is so everyone here? Um, Fourth edition. Yeah. So, so, Paul, it's fourth edition, Craft of Research, and then Fort Arabian should be ninth, ninth edition. I got it, Mom. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. The Repeat that, um, uh, I was up yeah. to you. There are many editions, so you have to choose the fourth, the latest, fourth edition, yeah. and then this one, the ninth, number nine, the ninth, ninth edition. Yeah. That's the uh, manual for writer, right? Ninth. Right. And fourth, yeah. All right, so let's begin. Um, mm -hmm. This time we're going to talk about the library and the internet because what is research without a library, right? <laughs> okay. So, the library is the traditional beginning point of research. It remains, even in the pandemic, <laughs> it remains the cornerstone of research. So you have to be able to access a library, whether phys a physical library or um, an online or virtual library. So here's a basic tip for you, for those who are far, uh, who are not in, on our campus and you can't visit our library, you can actually um, uh, check out books, okay? So it's very important that you are familiar with your school's library. You know how the books are organized. You familiarize mm -hmm. yourself with the services and loan policies. Now for APTS, since you are not here, you can email the librarian and then they can scan a copy of the books. Actually, there are certain books with PDF copies. You know, our library has okay. certain books mm. that have PDF copies and you can email them and say, ma'am, do you have this book in PDF form? And if they have it, they, we can forward it to you. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think some of your students here have experienced that. They emailed the librarian, do you have this book? And the librarian immediately emailed, oh, this is the PDF copy. Okay. But if we don't have it in PDF copy, the librarian can scan. But uh, they can only scan an original or a new book, a latest book like this one. They can only scan 10% of the entire book. So that would be according to copyright laws. So if you need a book or a journal and you know that it's in the library here, you can email the librarian so that they can help you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how do you know which books are available? You go here. So uh, mm -hmm. if you click this link, it will bring mm -hmm. you to our library catalog. I'm just going to show it to you. Sure. Alexandria, here. So if you click that link, this is what's going to appear on your screen. And then right. let's say you are the researcher. Mm -hmm. Then you have now access to APTS library. Okay. Mm -hmm. For example, you want to read John Cresswell. That would be the author. And then these are the books available in our library. This is out. Someone <laughs> borrowed it. This is in. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's how it's very simple. That's how you can check which books are available in the library. Okay. So wherever you are in the world, as long as you access this, alexandria.apts.local slash researcher pound sign underscore. Um, in, your, uh, uh, in your Moodle, I'm going to share it to you. I actually uploaded a list of library sources for you here, mm -hmm. this one. If you download that, you will see all the links. Okay, you just need to click the link. Okay. So that's for Alexandria. So that's for our library here in APTS. So you can access some of our books and ask our librarian to help you access those books. Um, wait a minute, you don't know the email, right? So let me chat. I'm going to send to you by chat. Uh, you mm -hmm. can email Sol Sakbat, that's her name. So here, just look at the chat, solsakbat at gmail.com, this, this girl. Okay. So if you email her, she's our librarian staff. She's in charge of scanning um, books for you. So if you need copies or you need to scan a book, just email her. Okay, next. Go back here. So, um, Another one, okay, let's move forward. We're going to skip these. Okay, this one is another library. Just recently, the school decided to pay membership, Global Digital Theological Library, DTL. This is the access code. Please do not share it to non-APTS students, I beg you, <laughs> because we need to... Um, um, we need to reserve, you know, the use of this access code to APT students only. So for you guys who are enrolled in this course, you can access by typing in this uh, access code. So this is the play. This is the link. So we're going to go there. Uh, and I'm going to show you where that is. This one. So if you click that link, this is what's going to appear on your screen, the global DTL site. So the global DTL site has a lot of books, 300,000 books, 15, is this million articles, uh, 11,000 journals, and of course, research aids. Research aids are, um, later on, I'll, I'll open that, it's dictionaries and so on. So for example, you need to study the book of Philippians, right? Mm -hmm. you, you typed in Philippians. And these are the books, okay? So, for example, this is the commentary. So, you view the book. Then, you put in the access code. So, our access code is PHI 2020-3397. Okay. And there you have access to the book. Nice. So it's uh, per chapter. You can download it, right? The contents. This is the chapter per chapter, right? Okay. So I won't download it because I have enough books in my computer. So if you want, if you need books, this is how you're going to access them. Okay. Sweet. 
please don't share the access code to others, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then now, if you need uh, what we call research aids, okay, this is, these are dictionaries and um, lexicon. So you just click research aids. Sorry, my internet is a bit slow. I know, I know, I know the problem. Stop share. Wrong one. This one. There you go. Okay, so this would be that research aid. So if you go back to the home page, you just click this one and you have access to dictionaries, commentaries, etc. Theological aids, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a very good online library. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> so next. Now, um, aside from our library here, so just please don't forget to use this access code. Uh, we also have um, a journal, an online journal access. Let's skip that. Not a break. Okay, dictionaries. Okay, so we have other research aid, uh, other sites. These are free sites like Oxford Biblical Study site. You can click that and you'll be able to access a lot of resources. And then our very own EBSCO. So EBSCO um, searches many journals and not just the theological studies, but social science, sciences, humanities, etc. So this is our username and password for EBSCO. Um, I'm going to go to EBSCO and let's see. Okay, so if you go to EBSCO, this is what you'll see. Then you log in APTS and then the password. Sign in. So slow. Okay. Um, for EBSCO, though, you have to narrow your search because, again, there are so many. Uh, anyway, you just select all, continue. So there are so many um, journals here, but you have to focus on those under theology, biblical studies, or ministerial studies only. And then make sure that you click full text because sometimes they will just give you uh, uh, a view or an abstract. So for example, let's say I will write my name. Let's see if I have a publication here. Okay, there. Now make sure this here at this side, click full text. Okay, because um, sometimes it will give you, um, they will only give you abstracts. So this one is a PDF full text. So if, for example, if you click this one, you will um, be able to read the entire journal. So EBSCO is for journal articles and journal articles are important because these are peer reviewed. So they're very reliable. And then you can um, cite. So if you click this one cite, that you can cite uh, using Turabian format automatically. So um, EBSCO will be able to um, give you the bibliography using Turabian format, okay? Um, if you want to read the full text, just click PDF full text. Okay, then you have access to the entire journal. So slow. <laughs> Um, you can also download this. So once it's, you know, completely open, just click download and you can download it to your um, computer as well. Oh, so sorry for the very slow internet.
Okay, so this would be the copy. So you just download this or you can save it in a folder here. And then again, you can cite using Turabian, just click this one. Okay, so EBSCO is important because um, it gives us journal articles. So for in writing your paper, you are required, actually the minimum is around 12 sources. So at least, um, let's say seven books and then five journal articles. Okay, so per paper, the minimum is 12 sources. Um, so you have to get a healthy mix of not just books, but also journal articles when you're writing. Some journal articles are actually more uh, recent than the books. Okay, so that's why we use journal articles in our research paper. So those are our sources. So we have the three, we have the library here. We have D DTL, then we have EBSCO. You can use other free sources um, like Religion Online. Oh, by the way, please take note of this and you have that in your copies anyway. So you can enter our EBSCO. Um, we have religiononline.org. They also have books there and they have other um, materials that you can download. Our very own Asian Journal of Pentecostal Studies are have um, journal articles that are for free. You can also download for free. Flower Pentecostal Heritage Center from the US. So we have the Assemblies of God Archive Center. That's the Flower Pentecostal Heritage Center. So they have a lot of archive materials that you can also download for free. Um, okay, that's it. So I'm gonna ask you to do a little experiment. Okay, I want you to try EBSCO. Okay, so um, can you go to this link on your computer? So you can minimize Zoom, it's okay. Can you go there, can you go here? And I want to see if you can log in, okay? Okay, go ahead, please. Go to EBSCO and try to log in. I want to see if you can log in. EBSCO. Yeah, EBSCO. So the username is APTS and this is the password. Tell me if you can log in. Hold on. Hold so. Okay, are you able to log in? So I want to see if you're having problems so we can fix it now. So type in this link and then use, enter your username and password. Okay, so those who can log in, you can show me a thumbs up sign. Thank Brian you. is okay. All right, Abdiel is okay. Oops. Tyvel is okay. It's not me. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Take your time. We just yeah, want to practice. Too. Okay, good. Who is having a hard time logging in? Okay. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> I can see you have um, assistance there. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Good. How about you, Hannah? Are you okay? All right. Gladys, you're okay? Okay. Take your time. Brother Fidel, are you okay? Okay, take your time. Yeah, the, the link. Mother, type it up. I've lost, I've lost you. Type up, type up the link. Finished lagging in, ma'am. All right, good. So I just want to make sure that everyone, um, there's no problem with your login. Like I'm for table link there. I can hear them, but I can't see them. Which is that one? I got a difficult one. I got a difficult one. You just yes, took a thumbs up and you're really locked in. Okay, looks like almost everyone's got in. It's okay? Not me. Not you, okay. Not yet. Not yet, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Can't seem to find the login. Oh, this one, this link here. Let's type it up. Yes, type the link, this one. Yeah. Yeah. Good, that's good. Hi, type up yeah. the link. The link. Can you just type? Search, is it? Okay. Let's lock in dot ESP. APT is it? How about you, Louisa? Were you able to log in? Yeah, okay. It's called E-B-S-C-O-H-O-S-T. E-B-S-C-H-O-S-C-H. Dash lock in. Yeah. 
Oh, there you go. Yay, good. Yes, sir. Oh, the password is at 969. And I've got a helper here. <laughs> That's good. You now you have to practice because we are using digital sources. So um, it's the time to practice. <laughs> okay, so I guess you guys were able to log in. Now, um, Wait, can I just hold you right there? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, it's, it's coming up now. Laura. That's good. Yes. Good to hear. So um, EBSCO, the DTL, yeah. and yeah. our library are your primary, three primary library sources. Okay, mm -hmm. so when you're writing your paper, you will use this three. Now the other mm -hmm. sources are just extra, but the most reliable are these three. Okay, so going back to EBSCO, because you already were able to access EBSCO, Oh, I, I lost my EBSCO there. Good. So for example, so this is EBSCO again. So you can download journal articles. For example, let's say you want to write about leadership in the church. Okay. So just type in the title or the topic. And then we have journals here about leadership. Don't forget to click here. If you notice, full text. Yeah. Okay, to make sure that you will only access full text. Okay. All right. Because in your papers, you are required to have at least five journal articles as a source, seven books. But since, you know, it's hard to get books, I understand. So five and five. Five books, five journal articles as your source. I want to see them in your bibliography. All right. Do you have questions about EBSCO? No question. Okay, that's good. So I hope to that you practice, you know, how to how to access EBSCO. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing. Actually, our time is almost up. I just want to make sure that you um, understand all the um, sources, digital sources that we have. Now we'll go to the end. Um, the next lessons is simply about um, evaluating uh, the sources in the internet. And we will not discuss it because we don't have time now. So the idea is just be responsible. The responsibility is on the user to evaluate resources effectively. You have to check the authority who says it. You have to check, you have to make sure that it's objective. You have to check if it is authentic. It's not fake news. You have to check its reliability, its timeliness, and so on. So now, your assignment, before we end, is this one. So in your Moodle, I uploaded a brochure entitled Evaluating Wikipedia. Who among you here uses Wikipedia a lot? No. I, use, I use it too, you know? But I want you to read this article, this brochure on evaluating Wikipedia, and then you're going to answer a quiz. So going back to your Moodle, where did I put my Moodle? Just a second, I lost my Moodle. <laughs> Let me just go back. Oh, there you are. there. Okay, so this is your Moodle. Download the reading here. So click assignment, study evaluating Wikipedia. And then next, this one, take the quiz on evaluating Wikipedia. So I'm not going to click preview. So um, here, download this one evaluating Wikipedia brochure, read it. Afterwards, 
click this one and take the quiz. The quiz will close on July 1, 10 a.m. So make sure to complete the quiz before it closes. Okay, do you understand? So first read this and then take the quiz. The list of library sources are here, this one. So all the links that you need and the password that you need are here. So you can check this as well. But your assignment is to read this brochure and take the quiz before July 1, 10 a.m. All right? Okay, that's it for this, ap this evening, afternoon and evening. Do you have any questions? Okay, so just remember you have a quiz. You have to answer that after you read the brochure. I, I will not be able to see if you cheated or not. <laughs> it's an honesty quiz. The Lord will see you. <laughs> okay, so just answer it as best as you can. It's a, just a true or false uh, quiz anyway. Okay, any questions before we end? Yes, uh, Laura. Uh, for, for our research, uh, to excuse me, do I come up with my own topic or do I get it from the, the book? Um, you come up with your own topic as long as it is theological, ministerial, or biblical. So okay. any topic that you have in mind that you really want to research on, okay, just... But um, we will go through a process, a workshop on how to formulate your research topic. But it's good that you think about your topic now. So if it's leadership or it's church ministry or if it's who wrote the book of Hebrews, you know, that's okay. <laughs> okay, all good. Yes, Paul? Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, can you get the file uh, for what? Does the example file, example file for the uh, submitting book review form. Ah, you want to see uh, the sample of a book review? Yes, ma'am. Uh, wait, let me share that. It's in your Moodle. So if you go to your Moodle under book review, I'm going to share the screen again. Okay, this one here, um, we have the lesson on how to do, how to write a book review, which we will discuss next week. And this is the model paper, an example of a book review APTS style. Another one, example of a one page reflection paper, an example of a reaction paper. Okay, so you have an exam examples here. Okay, our discussion of the book review will be on Wednesday next week. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so, okay. Okay. Any more questions? All right. Well, I think it's around seven now in New Zealand, right? So you guys must yes. be tired. <laughs> I'm going to ask our, our dear Pastor Brian to close us in prayer. Can you do that, Brian? Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this afternoon that we've come together and uh, learned so much. So we thank you for our professor. Pray that we yeah. pray that you bless her and continue to use her to um, teach us and grow us, Lord God, in, in, in our knowledge and understanding. Uh, I pray for my classmates, bless them all, and uh, Lord, we commit to you everything uh, that we are going through right now through this class. Uh, Lord, and aren't you alone in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 See you next Wednesday, yeah. 1 p.m. for Philippines, okay. 5 p.m. for New Zealand. See you. Okay. See you. Bye-bye. Please email me if you have any problems. Bye-bye. Uh,